Hey, this video gonna be um pretty much me going up Mont Montego and coming back down Montego on the other side. But I'm gonna talk about why I left Warner. I got a comment in one of my videos asking me to post a video about why I left Warner and to talk about the Walmart account. But there's some history between me and Warner. Um, the first time I was at Warner, I went to Warner twice. The first time I was there was uh, back in 2000 and late 2016, early 2017. Um, in October 2016, I was still active duty military and I decided I was gonna drive trucks and I found a program, apprenticeship program for all active duty military members to uh, leave their unit and go and become an apprentice at a uh, authorized, I guess, authorized job or educational uh, institution or whatever. So I did that. Um, the first time I was at one, I was OTR and I was getting paid 38 cent a mile. So out of that 38 cent a mile, I was making about $700 a week. And it was fine because I was still active duty. Um, so when I EAS in the back of service, I uh, turned around and Stay with Warner, still doing um, OTR and everything. And then uh, my pay from the military had stopped. And going from a guaranteed amount a week to $700 a week was, that was a big pay cut. And so I decided I was gonna see if I could go to a uh, different account, a dedicated account, and I called the uh, recruiter, a driver placement, and I talked to him about a dedicated account out of Jacksonville, Florida, called Sears. Well, they gave me a bunch of rubbish, saying that, you know, I could bring home twelve to 1300 a week by pulling loads for Sears and offloading the trailer and everything. Yeah, sometimes I would have to offload the trailer, other times they offload. So I took that deal. So about a week and a half into it, I got my first check. My, well, two weeks into it, I got my first full check from being on that account. And it turns out I went, I went from making 38 cent a mile to 28 cent a mile. So I effectively almost cut my pay in half because I was doing less miles and I'm getting paid 10 cent less uh, per mile also. So I was making anywhere between three and four hundred dollars a week. So I called the uh, my dispatcher and I said, hey, this ain't it. I said, I'm gonna need to go back on TR. My fleet manager told me, he said, hey man, give me two weeks and I can get you back OTR. I said, cool, I'll give you three weeks. So being a man of my word, three weeks later, I called him back. And he tells me, he said, hey, I need two weeks to get you back over the road. I said, I've given you two weeks. Matter of fact, I've given you three weeks. I say, I need to be over the road tomorrow. Like, this is my last load for you guys. For Sears. So, I was, uh, I did that load. That load took me from Jacksonville back down to Lakeland, Florida. So I went to the terminal because I stayed not too far away from Lakeland. I went to the terminal and did my 10-hour sleep, my 10-hour break at the house. So 
So after doing that, I get back up the next day. I go back to the terminal, get in my truck, get ready to go out the gate. The security says, you can't leave. I said, what you mean I can't leave? Well, security told me that um, I had to go see safe. And I'm like, my load delivers at 6 o'clock. It's 5. My load delivers at 6 o'clock. It's right here in Lakeland. But it delivers at 6 o'clock. I said, I can go do my load and I can come back. Security said, okay, I'm going to let you go, but I'm going to write it down. If you don't come back, then it'll be in the system that you left. But even though I told you you couldn't leave. I said, fine, I'll do that. So I went and I dropped off the trailer. There was a drop and hook. I dropped off the old uh, loaded one, hooked up to the new trailer. They emptied it, brought it back to the terminal. Get back to the terminal, I go see safety, and safety is writing, writing me up. And I'm like, what are y'all writing me up for? Well, um, a couple weeks earlier, but when I was OTR, I was riding, I was in Richmond, Kentucky, and I was behind a Swift driver. Everybody knows about Swift, right? But uh, this driver, he turns his uh, four ways on, and I sit behind him for about three to four minutes, thinking he's gonna back up, and he's not backing up, he's just sitting there. We got parking spaces to the left, and a few out to the right. Everybody who's been to that loves in Richmond, Kentucky know what I'm talking about. So, I go, get ready to go around him to the right hand side, and when I'm halfway down this trail, I look, and I see his steer tires turn to the right. I laid down on my air horn, but uh, he decided he was gonna go and he drug his trailer down the whole passenger, I mean the whole driver's side of my truck. If I could find the pictures, I'll post them on this, uh, I'll post them right about now. So, as the, um, while he was <laughs> tearing up the front end of my truck, it took another driver to run out in front of him to stop him. They ran out in front of his vehicle, in front of his truck, to stop him from uh, driving. So, what he do is, we call DOT, DOT come out, DOT writes a report, DOT determines that I'm not at fault. I don't get a ticket or nothing. So, after everything is said and done, I called Warner because, man, the guy broke my mirror on my, on my hood. He busted out my headlight on the driver's side, and he uh, took my mirror on the on the door. He took it and bent it forward. Didn't break the glass or anything. He just took it and bent it forward. So. Safety was writing me up for that, saying that I was at fault. So I'm looking at safety like, what do you mean I'm at fault? Like, law enforcement determined that I wasn't at fault, but you guys are determined that I am at fault. I don't understand that. So after everything is said and done, it was determined that I was at fault for the accident by, by the company. Straight up on ramp to I-24 East. And uh, that was the last straw. You know, strike one is, I'm not making enough money. Um, OTR, so I goes on a dedicated account and I should be making more money on a dedicated account. I lead a dedicated account. Now you want to write me up for an accident that I had. I had something to do with it, but an accident that I wasn't at fault. Straight on my to I 24 East. So now I told them, I said, they wrote me up, they put it on my report and everything. So what I did was I turned in my ID. 
issues I was willing to work with like uh, it needed a clutch I was willing to work with it to buy a clutch for it to get a clutch put in it needed an alignment a three axle alignment it needed a uh, four needed eight tires I had put four on there so I needed to buy four more turbo went out I could have rebuilt it but that was the last straw so I had a uh, ECM an ABS I had uh, a light issue I had the turbo I had the clutch I had eight tires and the, club, the turbo was the last straw, so I called my cousin, I told him he could get the truck back. Well, he kept, he took the truck back, but he kept my last two paychecks, $4,000 he kept. And um, at that time, I needed to get some money back in the house because COVID was in, it was in the middle of COVID, and a lot of people was out of work. And then here I come, I'm out of work now because you know, I was bamboozled, <laughs> hoodwinked by my cousin. I just happened to be in Lakeland, Florida. And what I did was I went on to call them, called Warner, and I went back to work with Warner. Now, I have nothing to say bad about them at this point. Um, I found the Walmart account. Cause I stay in Jacksonville now. So I found a Walmart account in McClendon, Florida. And I took it just so I could be, just so I could bring some money in the house and I can have a, uh, how do I put it? And I can be at home a little bit more, I guess. So I took that account. So a little time goes by and I'm making seven, eight hundred dollars again a week. Uh, they count was straight. It was, you know, I driving didn't touch no freight, but you had multiple stops, two, three, four stops, of, four, two, three, four stops of uh, a trip. So very rarely you have five stops a trip, but it could happen. Me being the only one working in my household at that time, seven hundred dollars a week ain't gonna cut it. So I found another. Um, oh, it breaks on fire. Well, it ain't on fire. It's smoking. I can smell it. But um, what I did was I found another job. The other job is where I'm at now, U.S. Express. But also, another reason why I left Warner, not only because I was only making uh, $700 a week, the other reason why I left Warner is because I was trying to find a company to where I can 
lease a truck and in three or four years I'll own a truck. Warner does not offer that. They offer for you to lease a truck onto them, meaning you already have your truck and you're leasing it onto the company. But they don't have a program where you can lease a truck from the company. And uh, that's what I was looking for. I was looking to lease a truck from the company and owning the truck within the three to four years time frame. Warner doesn't offer that. So I decided I was gonna take the leap of faith and go to US Express. <laughs> Excuse me. Go to US Express as a uh, lease driver, and so far everything's been working out. I did the uh, family dollar for a little while, and that doesn't pay enough for the work. I was able to. I'm, I'm making more than seven hundred dollars a week. I'm making what I need to make to take care of the family. But the amount of work that you do to upload that trailer, $200, that ain't enough. So I'm OTR again, and everything's looking up. I can see myself uh, finishing out this program and owning a truck. Now, the reason why I'm looking to lease a truck is because I have my own company, Stu's Logistics. I have my own DOT number. And everything and I just need a truck that's all I need is a truck I have everything else set up you know I was running under my own authority at one point with a uh, F550 you'll see like a, I don't know if I got any videos on it, but you'll see some pictures of it posted on my Facebook and everything and um, I decided I wanted to go semi so that's why I'm leasing a truck. I'm leasing a truck with a goal of buying it at the end of my term. And with US Express, my term is over with. There's no balloon payment, no one dollar buyout. It's at the last payment, I get the, I get the title to the truck. And that is my end goal. So that's why I left Warner twice. That's why I'm here at US Express. And the Walmart account is a great account. Um, but I think the max year probably make is twelve, thirteen hundred dollars a week. Um, there was one time I had a fifteen hundred dollar paycheck, but that was because I had to rescan some loads that didn't get uh, paid out on some paychecks, so I had to rescan them, and all of them went out on my paycheck. That's the only reason why I had fifteen hundred dollars. But the highest paycheck I had during the Walmart account at Warner.